Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Bangs, uh, and as promised, I bring to you a game from the first round of the Advanced Wars Egg Cup. Uh, yes, the Egg Cup Season 2 is finally underway. We started last week, and so far there are almost 700 players playing in this tournament. So if you haven't signed up yet, now's your chance. Uh, check out the video that appears in the top right, or you can just sign up by clicking the link in the pinned comment section. The Egg Cup is in Advanced Wars tournament for everyone. It doesn't matter if you're a complete beginner or a grizzled veteran. It should be an enjoyable experience for everyone involved. And in Season 2, we are making sure that we are matching people up according to matchmaking MMR. So uh, you shouldn't be able to enter the Egg Cup and get stomped by like a 1400 MMR player, which did happen to some players in the first season, which is a little bit unfortunate because one of the reasons why I hosted the Egg Cup is to try and lure people into competitive advanced wars. I want them to get a taste of their very first tournament. So if you've never played in a tournament before and you're like, oh, that sounds very scary, you definitely should sign up. It is a great way to get into competitive advanced wars, to test your skills and have some fun because that's what it's all about, even though this tournament does in fact have a prize. Check out the video for more information. So, uh, people wanted me to host kind of like more varied matches in Season 2. I had a tendency to pick the, only the high MMR matches in the first uh, round. And uh, people were like, can't you cast some new games, some mid-level games? So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Today we're checking out sort of like a mid-level match around 1100 MMR. I'm actually checking out the game of uh, one of the tournament organizers, one of my good friends, Subby. Um, he has been helping a lot with the Egg Cup, I've been helping to schedule matches. Um, we obviously don't schedule our own matches, that, that goes without saying. But he's been helping schedule the other matches and he's been very helpful. So I was like, you know what? Let's cast this game. Uh, it was actually a pretty good one. He's playing against a player known as Jimmy Jimbo. Never met this guy before, but his profile kind of makes me laugh. And uh, yes, this is going to be like a mid-level match, 1100 MMR, that's kind of when you're you're good, but you're, you're no like pro player, but you're, you're decent at the game. And the game actually did end up being pretty exciting, so I'm looking forward to casting it. So the first round of the Egg Cup, and I will, by the way, as promised, I will be hosting a game from every round. So, you know, if you if you want to get one of your games catch, casts, definitely sign up for the tournament. There's a good chance I might host your game. And you may also face against me as a player if you're on my MMR level, because I'm in round three now, I believe. So, uh, yeah, they're definitely sign up. There's still, still plenty of time to join. But yeah, the first round of the Egg Cup is being played on a map known as Botanical, and it won the map making contest. I decided to put the winner first because I wanted the best map to be the one that most people play. And uh, Botanical is a pretty fun map. I actually enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I would. When I looked at it at first glance, I was like, man, this map looks kind of boring. You know, because it's kind of just a very, like, average standard map, but it's actually a lot of fun to play because you have kind of like an HQ rush uh, situations where you have a strong side and a weak side. You got three bases on your strong side and just an airport on your weak side. So it, 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 it will usually devolve into an HQ rush, but I actually found that it's a lot more common that there's going to be like a big battle in the center here. So uh, what's actually going to happen is either red player will rush the HQ, like very rapidly and try to take it down and you can try to rush the uh, red player's HQ but that usually won't go too well for you because they have an initiative advantage but usually what will happen is either you'll go on the defense here that happened in my match it was like a crazy defense around my HQ or you have sort of like a battle in the middle here where both players actually just ignore the HQ and go into the center which uh, is very exciting you have these landers right here which can be used to transport units down to your weak side so you can defend it properly you can also use the lander to block your HQ I actually did this in my game to great effect. So this lander, how you decide to use it is uh, extremely crucial. The comb towers to make the map a little bit less stally, and just overall the terrain on this map is really well placed. I really like it. It also looks pretty, which is uh, a nice little added bonus. So uh, yeah, it's a, it's a great map. I understand why it won, and uh, I'm very happy that it did. Now, this matchup is not a very original one. It's a matchup uh, as old as time itself. Jake versus Adder, the kings of tier 4 standard. Uh, there's no surprise that we saw a lot of Jake and Adder picks, but we've also been seeing a lot of Flak and Jugger in this tournament, which really makes me happy because they are indeed available. Uh, we don't, we don't, uh, we don't uh, protest against fun in the Egg Cup. We allow Luxios because uh, we understand that sometimes it's you, you got to be allowed to have a little bit of fun in competitive advanced wars. But yeah, Jake versus Adder. 
is a very classic matchup on the league, happens all the time. Um, obviously, Ada and DCS need no introduction. They're both sort of like the top picks of tier 4. Ada with his movement powers, Jake with his plane and, plane and vehicle boosted movement. Um, Jake definitely has the advantage with his superpower. It's way stronger than Adder's, but Adder can pop that side slip often, and, uh, and that makes him very, very scary. Now, um, I will say, like, uh, out of these two COs, Looking at this map, you may think it's a Jake map because, you know, uh, artillery very strong here behind the river and lots of plane tiles for him to take advantage of. But I would actually argue that Adder is the better choice here because uh, Battlecopters are insanely good on this map. The mountains kind of make, there's a lot of positions for them to dart behind. The forest will slow down on tear. And I just found that having Battlecopters on your weak side in particular to defend your HQ is extremely important. And the fact that Adder gets that one extra movement just makes his Battlecopters so much better than Jake. So on this map, at least my consensus is Jake is, or sorry, Adder is probably the top one pick with Jake uh, being a close second. But of course, if you want to be a Giga Chad, you should just pick Flak. But hey, not everyone can be like that. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that's enough introduction for now. I say we get into the game, shall we? So, Jimmy Jimbo versus Sub EI. Adder up in the top right corner playing as Black Hole. Jimmy Jimbo as Jake in the top left or bottom left corner playing as Orange Start. Let us get into it, ladies and gentlemen. So, um, how you use your lander early on is going to dictate a lot of uh, how this match is going to be playing out. Uh, one mistake that I did in my match that I definitely uh, recommend most people do not uh, do is I um, I didn't go for my airport early. In, er, early. I actually decided to forego my airport to grab these properties down here. Don't do that. You want to grab your airport early on Botanical. You want to get those Battlecopters out as soon as possible. So I'd be actually opting uh, to go for the cap rather than go down here. I would almost property skip to go grab the airport early on. Because if you can get Battlecopters out super early, you force the opponent to build Empire instead of tanks and artillery. And if, if you allow them to rush your HQ with tanks and artillery, then you're going to be in a heap of trouble. Now you can see Jimmy Jimbo does indeed do this. He actually goes for his airport really early on. And uh, Subby does decide to go for his airport too once he's captured this property. He doesn't skip, he just goes for it uh, at a... Uh, yeah, he just goes for it now, which is fine. Jimmy is of course going to get it a little bit before Subby having that initiative advantage. It's probably not going to be too big of a deal. But yeah, both players just building infantry for now, going for their properties. The capture phase of Botanical is not super complex. There's some things you got to think about, but it's the overall, I'd say, the most most players are probably going to be playing it pretty similarly. Subby does open up a tank, though. Let's see if uh, let's see if Jimmy decides to uh, go a tank or a battlecopter or me. Oh, there we go. He go opens up a tank as well. Subby continues to cap a bunch of properties now using his lander. Let's see what kind of properties he's going to go for here. One thing you got to be a bit careful: the com uh, the com towers are actually kind of exposed here. If you're not careful, it could be very hard to get your own com tower. So you definitely want to try and get get them uh, sooner rather than later. If you put it off for too long, keep in mind your com tower is on your weak side, so your opponent can very easily end up taking it away from you, and then they have a 20% firepower advantage over you, and that is not good. Now, Jimmy. Opens up a second tank, so so far we're getting a very tank-oriented game. I've seen a lot of artillery openers on Botanical so far. It's cool to see a bit of an old-school tanker game. But it uh, looks like Subby is uh, gonna move, yes, aggressively moving towards Jimmy's HQ right here. And there comes the Battlecopter, very happy to see that, that's great. Very, very good. You want to get those Battlecopters out very quickly, they can be absolute game-changers. Jimmy decides to open a Battlecopter of his own. I see it's probably a good thing for Adder to, to mass Battlecopters against Jake because his Battlecopters will be superior. Now Jimmy using his lander to ferry some infantry over to the HQ. And it seems like Sub is actually going to be on the offense right here. That's what it's looking like to me because he's the one aggressively moving towards his opponent's HQ. So it looks like he's definitely going to decide that he is going to take the battle to the enemy's HQ, which is that's hard to do uh, unless you get some artillery to back, back you up. But... Jimmy does have a lot of infantry moving over here, so we might see a double prong battle here, actually. Subby moving with his infantry, uh, putting his tank back a little bit right here. He probably needs an Antire now, uh, or maybe he just wants to build battle. No, he's just building Battlecopters, okay. No Antire for Subby. He just decides to uh, make it into a Battlecopter brawl, which, uh, that's actually, a, that might be a good idea. Jimmy moves forward, starts capping his Comtower now. 
Subby has not begun capping his comm tower yet, but he could start doing it next turn. Now Jimmy is moving his tank onto the road, which is a bit of an interesting move. Subby could go in and attack here. Of course, there's Battlecopters in range, but the bot... Uh, yeah, okay, all right, interesting. I guess he feels confident that he'll be able to strike that, even if Subby decides... It's not like Subby has much of a follow-up, so I guess it's not a bad idea. Day H rolls in, now Subby decides to go for the Comm Tower, captures the two properties very close to the HQ. These properties, by the way, they definitely belong to him. This is your weak side, so you don't have a lot of map presence. You definitely don't want to overextend on Botanical. Don't cross the river, get your Comm Tower and then be, be satisfied. Don't try to get these two properties as black, don't try to get these two properties as red. I wouldn't even interrupt here, honestly, because you, look at here, Jimmy only has three infantry, Subby has like a wave of infantry coming here. You need to keep these two alive, so I'm wondering if Jimmy is going to do the Manx infantry, like, Manx infantry move is just definitely moving here and attack um, to try and interrupt, but I think that's probably a mistake in this, uh, this situation. Subby gets a free pickup here, uh, gets a e eating a free dude, as it's called, and actually being very ballsy here, using his lander to transport his infantry forward. And also interrupting the comm tower. Yeah, Subby's going very hard in for the comm tower. And this is a problem for Jimmy, because look at this. Um, he might not actually get his comm tower. This is kind of scary. Uh, one thing, though, with Subby, if he had a single anti in this region, these battlecopters would be completely useless. So I do think maybe it's a bit of a mistake that Subby didn't go for an anti. I think instead of going for this battlecopter, I would have probably gone for an anti here. Because with an anti here, you, you make all these battlecopters completely useless around here. If you only have Antire and Infantry, there's nothing for them to really strike. So we'll see what happens here. But uh, yeah, Subby's being kind of ballsy down south. I think he's gonna... Oh my god, another Battlecopter. He's just spamming them Battlecopters. No Antire. He's confident in his in his own Battlecopter's abilities to fight off the enemy Battlecopters. Which, as Adder, is not a terrible idea. Jimmy uh, transporting more Infantry to the HQ. Now strikes with the tank, placing himself in range of Subby's tank. This could be very scary if he doesn't do this properly, and he does indeed go for the interrupt. I'm not sure how smart that is. You really, yeah, both players kind of being very reckless with their infantry. I don't think this is a good play. You want to keep your infantry alive on your weak side. You want to take advantage of this HQ right here and keep them around this defensive perimeter. Now Subby, uh, Jimmy, sorry, opens up, our, uh, builds an artillery and an untire on day nine. So that Antire, depending on where he's going to send it, it's going to be able to ward away some Battlecopters. Day 9 rolls in. Subby retreats with his infantry and uh, finds another free dude to eat up with his Battlecopter. And is also uh, preventing Jimmy from taking this property. Very well played by Subby, using that Battlecopter beautifully to not only eat up a free dude, but also getting uh, denying a property. Denying income. He also takes the engagement with this Battlecopter now, moving in with the tank. And again, this is very smart because it, this is, keep in mind, this is Jimmy's weak side. He doesn't really want to take engagements on this side. He only really have his airport that can reliably reinforce. Of course, the lander can ferry ground units, but it takes a little while for it to do that. And now Subby is going in hard on his opponent's weak side, really taking the battle to him. And I'm liking Subby's positioning in this particular match. I think he's doing very well. Even kind of beating him back on the weak sides, which is kind of nice. <laughs> Using this lander to evacuate the 1 HP infantry, you love to see it. Save every unit you can. No unit should be wasted in advance for us, ladies and gentlemen. Another Battlecopter. Subby is just spamming Battlecopter. So if I was Jimmy now, I'd probably build like two Antire. Um, but yeah, he's moving forward. Building more battlecopters. Ooh, you gotta be careful here, Jimmy. You, you don't wanna you don't wanna put your battlecopters in range of out, even if you have that Antire, man. I mean, to be fair, Subby doesn't have tanks in this area, and that is like the one weakness that he has right now. But uh, I would be very careful if I were him, because um, that side slip is coming up, and that's one of the reasons why Adder is so scary in the early game. It's because that side slip. Suddenly his battlecopters are in range. So, but Jimmy decides to uh, take the aggression to Subby. He wants to go for that HQ. He has the artillery. It's very... If you want to attack the enemy's HQ, you need an artillery in your attack. Otherwise, it's going to be almost impossible to attack the HQ. Mm -hmm. And, of course, Jake has very strong artillery. So, it's a bit of a shame not to build them if you're actually going to uh, play as Jake. Otherwise, you might as well just play as Adder. Goes for the interrupt here in the center, takes a bit of a shot at the Battlecopter for that luck damage. Looks like he's not gonna get his, um, looks like he's not gonna get his uh, comm tower though. 
he might be able to take Subby's comb tower. But Subby can interrupt that for a little while, so uh, this is pretty good on his, his part. And in comes the side slip, ladies and gentlemen. This is going to be very, very scary. Such a strong power. Subby comes in with his Battlecopter. Boom! Tank rolls down. Takes down a unit. There we go. Gets a first strike on the Battlecopter. This is beautifully played. Using that extra movement. My goodness, Ad, there's so much cool stuff Adder can do. Beautiful defense by Subby. He's playing really well. Look at look at how many extra engagement that extra movement allows him to take. It's beautiful. Adder is in, I, I really do think Adder is the strongest pick on this map, just looking at how devastating he is. The power comes in at the perfect time for that push. Now he's also threatening the comm tower, and if he walls up smart in here, I think he might actually be a, Yeah, look at that. He might actually be able to get it. Two comm towers against his opponent. That could be very dangerous for Jimmy. Another Battlecopter. How many Battlecopter has Subby built? Jimmy, you gotta get more Antire out. You're getting slaughtered here. In comes the Antari. Now, of course, at this point, Subby's in, uh, Subby's in a bit of a pickle. He only has a single tank here and needs to bring this down. He has another tank, though, ready to lo load into this lander. Uh, this is, lander is in a bit of an uh, unfortunate spot right now. It doesn't have quite the movement to reach the shoal, which means that the tank is going to spend one turn, then another turn. It might just be better for him to move it manually down, honestly. But let's see if Jimmy's attack can do something here. He's bringing up his artillery. He's now threatening the comb tower. Bringing his Antire into the lander and pops the beat down? Huh? Is that a misclick? Oh no. Oh no, what was that? Did he... Did he think that the beat down would let him interrupt the comb tower? Was Is that why he popped it? I... Okay, so tank versus infantry. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. I think maybe if if Subby hadn't had his power active, then the beat. But even if he uh, even if he kills this infantry, he's not gonna be able to. I, this must have been a misclick. He must have misclicked. Either it's a misclick or he wants the ten percent defense for the next turn. But yeah, this beatdown doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. That is, uh, I think that's, I think that's just actually just a misclick. Now Subby gets the other comb tower, brings in his tank, just places it in artillery range. He doesn't care. He just wants to kill that Antire. Yeah, you gotta guard that Antire. That Antire is your lifeline. You know how fond Subby is of spamming battle. Oh my god, this is a slaughter. Oh my goodness, this is this is hard to watch. Antire goes down, and let me get... Yeah, another Battlecopter. How many Battlecopters is that? Not seven? Eight? Oh my goodness. Yeah, this is... Uh, <laughs> Jimmy is now trying his best to attack, but Subby is actually kind of repelling the attack due to how many Battlecopters, and there's no Antire in sight. There's no Antire in sight for Jimmy. Poor little Jimmy. He's gonna... <laughs> Not our precious Jimmy! Stealing them blind. Sorry. Couldn't, couldn't help. Couldn't help. Uh, couldn't help it. Um, yeah, okay. All right. Two Antire. He needs Antire. Should have built a lot more Antire and kept the ones he had available. But despite everything, they are actually still kind of equal in unit value. Although Subby has a big unit lead and a far superior uh, positioning and two comm towers, which is a pretty big deal. But he's got to be a bit careful here. Jimmy does have a force heading towards this HQ, of course. Until Antire arrives. Oh, no! That artillery. That artillery was his whole lifeline. Without it, the attack is pointless. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Molested by Battlecopters. Those Battlecopters are wrecking havoc on poor little Jimmy. Look at that. He's got so many... But it's like mosquitoes swarming you. And there's no mosquito repellent at all. It's like when I'm up at the cabin and there's just been a rainfall and the mosquito... Yeah, he's, he's dead. <laughs> wow. Oh my goodness, that was hard to watch. So yeah. Death by Battlecopter. That's the theme of this uh, round. Beautifully played by Subby. Very beautifully played. He played really well. I think he's a little bit under... He's underrated in terms of rating. I think Subby plays on the level of a 1200, honestly. 
So uh, that was uh, that was a very cool match, very aggressive match. I think showcasing why Adder is ridiculously strong on this map, really. He's incredibly good. The Battle Copters are just so strong, and they're kind of like your only way of defending your weak side. So if I were to give any advice, build... If you see your opponent spamming Battle Copters, you got to build more anti-air, and you got to keep them alive, too. I mean, uh, Jimmy had, like, a single anti-air, and he relied on that anti-air to ward away the Battle Copters, and then, you know, he just lost it. And as a result, his attack failed. So, yeah... Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, hope you guys are enjoying the Egg Cup so far. Let me know in the comment section how it's going for you. Uh, let me know about your games. And uh, yeah, as always, sign up, have fun, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.